Good morning, everybody. Hi. Okay, we are going to be doing a precious metal clay or a metal clay class uh, this morning. Uh, I'm going to start in a minute. I'm just going to make sure I've got everything because we need a bit more stuff today than we have done with the beading classes. I want to make sure you can see as much as you can as well on the table here. And I just want to find something that I'm going to show you how to mould as well. So we've got a lot to fit in. Okay, let me... Let me... Get a few more bits ready while we wait for some more people to, to join us. I have boxes and boxes of metal clay. Half finished, finished, broken because I dropped my box off the table the other day and I broke loads of pieces. Never mind. Getting used to a new space to work in, I think that is. All right. I've got lots of things to show you. What's to do? I've got my little sample for the next day, just like Blue Peter. Okay, I'm going to get started because I am a little bit late anyway. Thank you all for joining me this morning. I'm Amy of the Oxford Bead Shop, Amy Sermon School of Jewellery. And um, thank you for joining me on all my little tutorials that I've been doing. I'm really enjoying it. It's keeping me sane, I think, because it's giving me a, a touch of normality in my life. Um, so today I am going to show you the wonders of working with metal clay. Hello Susan! Um, it's absolutely fantastic material to work with. Anybody that has worked with it before will, I'm sure you will agree. What I'm going to try and do today is to keep it quite simple. So it's something that you could achieve at home with very minimal tools. There are parts of the process that are going to need not more sophisticated tools necessarily, but maybe things you're not going to have at home. But the idea is, is that if you wanted to do this at home, you could buy a pack of clay from me. I could send it to you. You could make your bit. You could send it back to me and you could have it made into a pendant. But we'll talk about that later. Let's have a little look at some of the, the techniques. OK, so all the tools that we're going to be working with, as I've done with all of the other sessions I've been doing, I'm going to post everything up on the Facebook page after this. So you'll be able to see the different tools. I'm going to talk to you about the kit that I sell and things like that. But basically what we are going to be making today is we are going to be making a nice, simple little pendant using precious metal clay. So precious metal clay or metal clay. I use precious metal clay. Precious metal clay is the brand. And this is what we've got here. Okay, I'm going to use PMC Flex. And this is a five gram pack. I'm not going to go into the detail that I usually would, obviously, in one of my teaching sessions, because I could go on for probably hours this morning with you as much as I'd like to. Um, we don't have the time to do that today. So um, Precious Metal Clay is the brand. There is another brand on the market called Art Clay. I've always worked with Precious Metal Clay. I don't think there is a huge amount of difference between them. I would imagine that most PMC artists would prefer working with that and Art Clay artists would prefer working with Art Clay. Um, so basically what it is, is it's very, very fine particles of silver mixed with an organic binder and water that gives it a clay-like consistency. So you work with it in its clay form which means you can do all sorts of wonderful things with it. You can roll it out, you can texture it, you can cut it, you can paint it onto things, you can mould it into things, you can do a whole range of different things. And again, what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you some samples, but also I'm going to post these up on my Facebook page later in the follow-up um, post to the tutorial today. Okay, so some of the wonderful things that you can do with it, and, and I think this is where it shines, is that it can be so textured. You can get so many textures and details in there. I mean, I look at some of these pieces. I've had some great feedback from you, by the way, of uh, make sure that I'm holding things up to the camera a bit more and wearing a white T-shirt and all sorts of different things coming from all of you. But look at the texture on there. So that's been created using a sea urchin. And then I've set a little stone on there as well. You see that? So I can set a little stone. So again, here's another little piece. This is just a moulded piece. And that was a button, a fab button, I think was my sister's actually. But with that, 
um, I've made a mold and I've just pushed it into the mold. So I'm going to start by showing you all these wonderful things. Okay, now molds then. Let's start by doing a mold because then that can be curing why we do all the other bit. This is what I use for making molds and this is called Silly Gum. Again, I'm going to put this up for you so you know what it's called. I've just been buying it on um, Amazon to be honest. I think it's about 14 quid for this size and you can make a lot out of this size. What you do with it, and I'm going to mould one of these little pieces here. Let me get, what was it I was going to mould? I'm going to mould this, look. It's fab. Shell, okay? Right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to take equal amounts of both. So I've got a little bead there. And I've got a little bead of this here as well. Okay, so equal amounts of both, and then I'm going to mix the two together. So we're just going to mix the two together there until we get a consistent colour, no marbling, and it's all going to be a nice consistent colour. So I'm just going to mix that together. So you can do anything with this. Button, buttons are great actually. I really like buttons, I use lots of buttons. Um, tiny little charms. So any of you that have seen my earrings that I sell, my little studs, this is how I make them. I'm gonna give you more of my secrets away. So this is how I make them. I make a little mold and I have all my little molds like that. And then I will make it into the clay like that. And then I will fire it and then I'll solder my earring backs on like that oh, dropped you like that all right okay so here we go nice equal amounts of both and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to pop that down onto the table can you see i can't see because of all your uh, messages there but i quite like being able to see who's joining me okay so i've made that into a little just a little kind of lump on the table and then i'm going to push that in i just like to push up towards the side as well what you need to be careful of when you're doing mould is that you don't have any undercuts. Imagine that once you put your clay into this, you need to be able to take that out without distorting it. So if it's got an undercut, so when you push the clay and it goes underneath something, when you pull that out, it's going to distort it and it's going to ruin it. So that's why buttons are quite good, to be honest. Right, I'm going to leave that now. But we're going to come back to that in a minute. But look at all this other wonderful stuff that I've got that I've collected on my walk this morning. I'm very lucky to live in a lovely village and um, we've been on a nice dog walk this morning, enjoying the sun and um, yeah, picking up some pieces as we've been walking around as well. So I've made a sample pendant that I'm going to show you the finishing off part out of a little flower. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to use something like this. I'm going to use a bit of this. It's just a bit of grass from the uh, from my walk there. And I've got a couple of bits of that. And I'm going to show you how to, to make that into a pendant. Okay, let's get these out of the way. Again, I'm going to post all this stuff up to give you lots of ideas. Right, now, some of the things we need here, you might not have at home, but you might be able to improvise with something else. So if after this you have any questions about anything, could I use this instead of this, Amy? Feel free to put a note up. Actually, put yeah, put, I was going to say put a note up or email me, but if you put a note up on the page, then everybody can have a little look at the question and have a little look at the response, which would be really nice. So I've got a little piece of Teflon sheet here. This is just something that the clay is not going to stick to, but it means I can then transfer it for drying and it's easy to, to move around. So the other thing that we're going to use as well are some playing cards. And the reason that we're going to use playing cards is because when we roll the clay out, we want to determine the thickness. And I'm going to lay down four cards on that side and four cards on this side. Okay. We need some balm. Now what the balm does is it stops our hands from drying the clay out because we're just putting a little bit of protection onto our hands. Let me take my ring off because I don't want to get all clogged up with it. Probably clogged up with all sorts of other things, having boys that I have to deal with. Okay, so a little bit on my hands there and that's just gonna stop me from drawing the moisture out of the clay. But the other thing that this will do is it will stop whatever we're pressing into the clay from sticking to it and the roller that we're going to use from sticking to the clay as well. The clay that we're going to use, like I said, I'm using a five gram pack of Flex. Now I've already made a pendant out of this. So what I did when I took it out of the pack is I split it into two. 
this is the other half and I'm going to show you the other half the finishing off part of it later so this is my other half there it is just a little lump of clay okay now metal clay is available in all different pack sizes and you would choose the pack size according to your project you wouldn't go and buy a 50 gram pack size which I don't even know how much that is but it's quite a lot um, and make a pair of earrings because it will dry out ultimately it will start to dry out and you will lose some of the kind of malleability that it has and and the workability that it has I suppose is the word now what I'm going to do with this is what I what I don't want to do is to sit here playing with it in my fingers because it's going to dry out so you need to know what you're going to do before you take it out of your pack you need to plan it out now you could plan that out by pushing it into something else that you might have at home kids play-doh plaster scene i don't know blue tack's not going to work quite the same but you know have an idea of what it is you want to do first research what it is you're wanting to do with it because it like i say it will dry out so what i'm going to do put it into the palm of my hand roll it into a ball that's as much as i want to touch it then i'm going to put it in between my cards I'm going to take a roller. I've got a roller here and all these bits we sell in our kit. I've got a starter kit I'm going to talk to you about later. I'm rolling my hands down the roller so I'm applying some of that balm to it. I don't want to physically apply balm to it because it'll, there'll just be too much on there. Um, but again, you could use anything at home like this, a pen, uh, a pencil, something, you know, out of the kids' Play-Doh stuff maybe. Then I'm going to roll it. So I'm going to roll it out. I'm going to go a little bit in one direction. I'm going to turn it and a little bit in that direction. Now, I, what I don't want to do is just start rolling it in one direction. It's going to make it really long, unless that's the shape that you want. If you want something more rounded, be aware of how you're rolling it out. So I'm just going to do that. There. There we go. So that's a nice little shape that I've got there. But you see, by having those cards there, it determines how thick I roll the clay. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of balm. This is balm that I make out of beeswax and olive oil. Works really well. I used to buy something called badger balm that I'd use, but it's quite expensive and you don't really need to, to use that. It's, it's gonna, it does exactly the same job. Now what I've done there is I've painted i've um, applied some balm to the surface of the metal clay really important if you don't do that when you go to texture it or push something into it it could stick so make sure that you apply some balm to the surface and then what i'm going to do i'm going to use a found object so i've got something like this and i could lay that down onto the surface there and roll it in and it would impress that into the surface or I could use something like a piece of lace. Again, lay that down on the surface and roll it in, making sure that you're still on top of your cards because if you haven't got your cards there, it's going to push it in too far. You're not going to be able to control it, all right? Now, the other thing that you could do as well is if you had a an object, a three-dimensional object, more like this, you can push it onto the surface. And that's that texture that I showed you earlier, that wonderful, remember we looked at that right at the beginning, okay? So that's really nice, a sea urchin or a shell or a piece of bark or, you know, it's endless. You can just have to use your imagination, really. So what you would do is you would um, pick that up push it down onto the surface nice and firmly because obviously we can't roll onto that i'm going to use these though i'm going to do some these are just going to be i'm going to put a little one there and look, i've got another one here and i'm going to do a little one over this side as well just to create some nice little like feathery leaf texture on the surface and then roll it in and that's all i need to do see i did that just roll that straight in. hopefully you can see what i'm doing and then i'm going to take that off and take that off look at that so nice can you see that all right so once we've done that we're going to let it dry now what you can do with this is you can put it into your oven at 150 degrees for 20 minutes and that will dry the clay out completely. It's really important that it's dry before we start doing the next bit. So that's what I'm gonna do with that now. That's gonna, I'm gonna pop that in the oven so it can dry out. You could leave it to air dry, but the thing is with this Flex, which is the fourth generation of PMC, it takes longer to dry out. Um, so I always make sure that it's completely dry by running it through the kiln, um, or the, or the uh, oven at 150 degrees for 20 minutes. 
There we go. Okay, so pop that off to one side for now. So once that's gone through the drying process that we've just discussed, it will then come out completely dry and ready for us to do the next bit. This is the one that I made out of one of these. Can you see that? Look, can you see the petals? Yeah. Now, don't worry about all those little bits of the flower that's come off because we're just going to, um, that will just burn off when we fire it. All right. Now, the next bit is to start to finish it off and file it down. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take a little piece of emery paper and I'm going to start to just run around the outside there just to smooth it down a little bit. And just to make sure so what you want to do when you're filing don't hold it here and file over here make sure that you are holding it where it is you're filing to support it because at this point it is a bit brittle so i'm just going to go around the edge smoothing it down so you'll have to have a little look on my pinterest page um, I have a board, precious, I can't remember what I've called it now, metal clay workshops at Amy Sermon School of Jewellery, a bit long-winded, but it tells you what it is. <laughs> um, yeah, and on there are all things that people have made on my workshop. So we do an intro class, we do a taster class, we do private sessions if you wanted to come along and do it as a big group with your mates for your birthday or a hen party or anything like that when we're all up and running again um yeah and you'll be able to see just the amount of thing the, the variety of stuff that you can make with this also if you look at my own work that i sell either on etsy or um, images on my facebook pages and on um pinterest you'll also see on there lots of examples of how i use it but i also use it in uh, combined with silversmithing as well so you know for like i showed you a pair of earrings i'll make the detailed part of the stud out of metal clay and then i'll solder the earring wires onto the back using some traditional techniques or i might make bangles chunky bangles using um sterling and then make little charms to hang off it with the metal clay so it combines really nicely and you can solder to it as well Okay, so I have made up a little video actually of how I make my stud earrings, so I'll make sure I put that up for you all to have a little look at. Okay, there's my little pendant. I've just filed around the edge, it's not going to need much at all, really. I'm going with an organic shape, the shape that I've rolled it out to. You can buy little cutters, so you could use things like that um to cut the shape out if you wanted to but it's quite nice just having a nice little kind of piece like that instead all right now i just want to get a lighter piece of um emery bear with me i'll be back in one sec just want to get a lighter piece because i just want to smooth the back and i want to make sure it's a nice smooth piece here What's quite useful to use as well is a rubber block to work on. So I'm just going to use this little rubber block so it can support the front of it while I rub the back down. So I'm making sure it's supported. I've wrapped it around my finger there and I'm just giving it a nice smooth finish. smooth back there as well now all right so there we are ready for the next bit okay i need that actually okay next bit we need to drill a hole so we're going to drill a hole in it so then once it's fired we can put a little um jump ring through it now i always use get it all over your hands i always use a, a drill like this this is called a pin tong they are really good little tools this bit at the top moves independently from the rest of the drill so what you do is you hold it into position like so and you twist with the same hand in a clockwise direction 
if you don't have one of these, which probably most of you won't, um, you could, well, I sell them, they're six pounds, then you can buy the drill bits. Or you could, when it was wet, use a little tool and make a hole in it. But it's not going to be that neat. That's the only thing. It's not going to be as neat. You'll see how neat the hole is once I've drilled it with this. But you could do that and kind of try and tidy up a bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose where I want it to go. I'm then going to hold it in the palm of my hand there. And I'm going to twist through with the same hand. Little squeaky noise there. So just keep, hopefully you can see me doing that. Every so often I just reverse it. There we go. And I can feel I'm getting through the bottom because you can feel it start to tug. So, there we go, I'm through. So I'm just going to do that. I like to go through from that side as well. And look at my lovely neat little hole. Now, this is a 1.5 mil drill bit because during firing, which is what we're going to do next to this, during firing, what's going to happen is the piece is going to shrink a little bit. So if we use a 1.5 mil hole, it means that once fired, a jump ring will fit through there. Most jump rings are like... Um, about one mil wire and then earring wires are 0.8 mil so if you use a 1.5 mil drill bit if you're making earrings or if you're making a pendant it means that then the jump ring or the earring wire will fit through the hole and you'll still have a nice movement afterwards okay that's it look at that it's dry it's filed i'm happy with it around the edge there's a funny little bit there actually i'm just going to get that bit off i'm just going to get my file back on there a little tiny bit just there that's going to be pretty this one a little flower what i actually did with the flower though is because there's quite a chunky bit in the middle i flattened it a bit first so i flattened it a bit first took the back off and then i rolled it in like i've just shown you okay all right this is a fun bit i hope that you're going to be able to see this it's very bright in this room but now we're going to fire it so I've got myself a fire brick, I've got myself a little torch, and I'm going to make sure that it's full of gas first. So I'm just going to fill that. Okay. Mind all those bits out the way. Pop that onto there. Can you see that there, hopefully? I'm going to get rid of all your messages. So, I, Oh, how do I do that? I never know. Oh, there we go. There, good. Okay, so there we go. That's there, that's there. I'm not going to be able to make it any um, darker in here. It's really good if you um, are firing at home yourself using a little kitchen torch like this, something that you'd make your creme brulees out of, that you do it in a dark room. Because what we're going to do, we're going to start to heat it and what will happen is the smoke will start to come off. Um, and that's the organic binder starting to burn away. Then what will happen is the piece will set a light and that's the organic binder continuing to burn. That's when you may see it start to curl up and start to shrink. Um, and then when it starts to glow, a soft orange glow, that's when we start a two minute firing. OK, now um, that's why it's easier to do it in a dark room because you'll be able to see that colour. You might not be able to see it in here today, but let's see, see how we get on. So I'm going to need to get my watch set up, ready to go. There we go, to two minutes as well. I can't do it on my phone because we're on it. All right, so I've got my two minutes ready to go there. Okay, so here we go then. So I'm going to turn our torch on and we're going to start to heat. All right, so we're going to start to heat. And first, what you might see is the smoke starting to come off. And then you'll see it set alight. Can you see the flames there? There we go. And then it will start to settle down the flame. And then you should be able to see an orange glow. Can you see that? Hopefully you can. I'm going to start my two minutes now. Also, if I turn it that way, can you see how it's lifted a bit? See, it's lifted. So that's where it started to shrink. So the outer is shrinking, but the inner hasn't yet. So I'm going to keep going at that temperature. If you had a darker room, you'd be able to see it much better and you're then less likely to melt it. Because what you can do here is if you overheat it, it will melt. 
and you'll end up with a little blob of silver so you don't want that so just keep it moving now if i were making something that was three times the thickness of this and used a whole pack of clay i would still torch fire for two minutes the difference would be in the time it takes to reach the beginning of the two minutes there is a guide and the guide is that anything above the size of a 50 pence piece is too big to be fired basically anything that you where you can't keep the whole thing this nice consistent orange glow will be too big or too complicated to fire with a torch so if you had something that was long you know when you were down here this end would be cool and you wouldn't be able to do it things like that would need to go in a kiln so the other firing method is to put it through a kiln but you need a kiln that's going to go up to at least sort of 700 degrees and you would hold it for 10 minutes and that would be described as a fast fire program okay so we're just going to keep going with that and we've got 28 seconds to go two minutes is a long time when you are firing pmc and on a treadmill all right there we go oh i think this is going to look really pretty can you see the orange you can a bit can't you that's good so if your torch were to um, stop halfway through, run out of gas or something, or if you had to stop halfway through because something happens, you could just, there's our two minutes up, stop there, stop there, and that's done. So what you could do is you could just stop and you could start again from the beginning. If you feel that your piece has dropped in temperature while you've been doing it, then what you can do is just continue to fire it. So say if I was doing that and I thought, oh, I don't think it stayed orange, like, you know, I might wanna add on 30 seconds. So I would just keep firing it for an extra 30 seconds. You can't over fire it, you can overheat it. So if it gets too hot, you will end up with a blob of silver, but you can't over fire it. So you could keep doing that for as long as you wanted to. You wouldn't over fire it. OK, right. So now let's get this some water tweezers. I'm going to pick that up. This is called quenching. See if it does it. See that noise? Quenching. So that's being quenched in water. Let's move that out of the way as well. And then I'm just going to take, oh, have I got a, no, I haven't got a towel down there. There we go. Little tissue. And I'm going to dry that off. All right. There we go. Look. So it doesn't look like clay anymore. Can you see it's quite white? Definitely doesn't feel like clay anymore. You'd be able to have done that before. It would have broken. And you can hear that it sounds more uh, metal. Okay. Now, the reason that it's white is because during the firing process, as the organic binder has burnt away and the silver has remained, we've been left with like a mountain range type surface. So the light is being absorbed. What we need to now do is to compact that surface down so the light starts to reflect back at us. So I'm going to take my rubber block again. I'm going to pop that down onto there. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to try and do it like this for you. I'm going to take my brush. I don't know how well you're going to see this, guys, to be honest. I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to start to brush over the surface. Look. Give it a brush. Oh, it's really pretty. I might have to make another one of these for my, uh, for my nieces. There we go. So, wait one sec, let's show you. So there's the side that I've brushed with the steel brush there. And there's the side that I haven't brushed. See, that's all white. And then that one's nice and silvery. I'm gonna go all the way around the edge. And on the back. Now I would now polish this up a bit more as well. So I've got this lovely agate burnisher here. And if I just rub that over the surface as well, it's going to give me a nice high shine. So all I'm doing here is I'm compacting that surface down even more. Burnishing, it's called burnishing. 
and then that's going to give me a really nice high shine on the surface and then I can go around the edge as well now I have a barrel polisher that I put my pieces into so it's basically um, a rubber barrel filled with a steel shot and something called barrel bright and they tumble around a bit like a stone tumbler it tumbles around and all the steel shot rubs against the surface and it gives it a really nice high shine but if you haven't got one of those at home or if you haven't got an agate burnisher at home another thing that you could use is a teaspoon so if you just put a teaspoon and put your thumb into the bowl of a teaspoon you can use that to rub around the surface and that does the same job because steel is harder than silver so it means that um, it will polish the surface up you can compact it down there we go look at that so last thing that we need to do to make it into a necklace is I've got myself I've got these ready I've got myself a little chain I'll just get the chain out so these are 18 inch chains I've got here little simple 18 inch trace chains there and also we need a jump ring so let me get sorry I should have got this all prepped <laughs> I was a bit behind this morning because of our walk uh there we go <laughs> good okay so let's get one of these out so i want a nice sterling silver jump ring so like i said this is be made from kind of one mil wire so get my little jump ring out Can't get it. there we go okay so twist that open thread that on close that up and there we have our nice little flower pendant, that one is. Yeah. Isn't that nice? So again, I will... Let's see if I can show you a bit better. Look at that. Can you see the little petals on it? And that's it in the middle. It's lovely, isn't it? There we go. So that's working with metal clay. Fabulous material to work with. Now... If you wanted to have a go at home, you can buy the packs of clay from me. It's 11.65 for a five gram pack. And you could, so both these pieces have been made using that pack. So you could make two pendants like that, okay, out of one pack. Um, if you wanted to have a go at doing it at home, you could roll it out and um, texture it with something like I've shown you. You could dry it at home. And then if you wanted to send it in to me for firing because you haven't got the facilities or the tools to be able to fire at home, then I will fire it for you, polish it and send it back. And if you wanted it made up into two pendants with jump rings and chain, you could send it in. I've figured the cost out. It would be $24.85. That would include your pack of clay, two chains, two jump rings and postage back at £3.50. So that is possible to do. I'll put all this information up on my website. If you wanted to have a go at home and you wanted to get set up a bit more at home, then the other thing that I sell are metal clay kits. I haven't got many left at the moment because everybody's wanting to buy them, but we, I will be making some more. So in the kit, you get a firing voucher, so you can send it into some bits into us for firing. And you've got everything that we've used today. So you've got your roller and you've also got spacers with that. You've got a little brush, you've got a needle tool. Now the needle tool is one of these. And what this is good for is for cutting out freehand. So say I rolled that clay out. Let me move that a minute. Say I rolled that clay out and then I rolled into it a leaf, but I wanted to cut the shape of the leaf out. What I could do is then cut around it with my needle tool to that shape. So they're quite good to use. Um, so then you've got the steel brush there. You've got your Teflon sheet. You've got your piece of emery paper and you've also got your rubber block there as well to work on. OK, so that's everything. And that's £25. Um, it does take a bit more postage because of the size of it. So that would be sent out on a two to three day delivery via Hermes at £5.50. Again, I will put all this up on the post following today's session. So I hope you've all enjoyed that. Thank you for staying with me. How long have we been on for a little while? 40 minutes, a bit longer than usual. But I hope you've enjoyed it. If you've got any questions, let me know. And maybe I'll see you on Saturday for Viking Knit.
Thanks very much. Bye.